I did have a question about the naming. Why is it called Pro V1s? Have you ever considered Pro V2? Uh, nope. So we just landed in sunny Southern California. We have a bit of a change coming up this year. Uh, we're gonna be working with a new equipment partner. We're working with the folks at Titleist, the folks at Akushnet, uh, Titleist, Footjoy, Scotty Cameron, things of that nature. Bob Vokey. Bob Vokey. I'm, I'm, I'm pumped up about it. Um, it's almost a return to I played Titleist as a kid. I think to a man, all of us grew up playing Titleist equipment. I think all of us know what a kind of premium brand it is. And uh, it, it's funny to, to get one of the clubs in your hand now and look down at it and kind of feel like you're 17 years old again, 15 years old again. We both had 983Ks or, you know, 905. 905R, I had that one. I had the 962 irons and I had the 990 irons. Were you a Scotty guy? Uh, I had the Futura. So first things first, we're gonna go see how they actually make everything, which always kind of opens your eye into just, you know, just how much customization goes into all of these, what that means. There's real people building these clubs. It's not like they're put together by robots. Roughly two hours of clock time in order to finish a set of clubs with those 10 people. If your clubs were started before 10 o'clock today, they would be in the FedEx truck by noon and then on the way. Then we'll go into our actual fitting. We'll do the, the dynamic warm up. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll make sure everyone's ready to go. Strategically picks up the camera when his shoulder starts. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna go hit a bunch of golf clubs. A ton of golf clubs. That was, that was kind of the, the warning. Like, be, tomorrow's gonna be a really long day. Prepare yourself heard a million times about how important it is to get fit, but I don't think I fully understood it until this experience on this day. I, you cannot come up with this on your own. You cannot do it on your own. I will never get another golf club that I do not get fit for. This experience on this day changed my whole interpretation of the importance of getting fit. When we're working with players, tour players, amateurs, doesn't matter. You know, we're looking for the specific area, the grind, the bounce, the loft that is going to create that performance shot for you. For, I mean, I don't hit the ball that far, and I understand like how important scoring and like getting my wedges dialed in, but on the top end of my set, like in order to add that extra wedge in, I had to take a longer club out because I'm like, don't have that much distance. Well, the so one thing that we can, that I can kind of say that's important is that if you're not a long hitter, we can play with less wedges and we can dial in one or maybe two of the wedges that can help you greenside. Yeah. And you gain up top in the long yeah. clubs because obviously you need it. On tour, it'd be a little different. I mean, yeah. we're, we're throwing more wedges in the bag to help these guys get yeah. closer. Um, just based on your path, you're a little over the top, which yeah. means you get that cut, that makes you steeper. Yeah. So we're gonna increase bounce a little bit there. Okay, okay a couple shots. Nice. How'd that feel? Oh, good. Okay. The level of expertise of these fitters just, it blew me away. It's such an iterative process. It's not just equipment, equipment, equipment. It's here's what you're doing. Here's how this works. It's like almost like a lesson amongst your fitting. It's just, it's incredible how detailed everything they did was. We're going to go, we're going to go right for the black flag. That's right at 50 yards. Okay. significantly better than it would be with this. Totally. People always assume that more loft right. is a benefit. It's not. It's oh, good. it's so much better. It's way easier. All right, you want a fun little drill? Yeah. Okay, set up to it. Okay. Get comfortable. 
close your eyes okay keep your eyes closed and with your left hand point to where you think you're aiming look where you're pointed way left that's where your ball's going yep so do it again that's your that's your your body's awareness okay. right so your geometry is good yeah your swing is good I'm just you just think that working that's towards where you're, the wrong yeah thing. so set up to it with your eyes open okay and with your eyes open point to that spot okay yep. where you want to go so now point to where you want to go see where that feels yeah swing down that field okay huh. night and day there huh <laughs> Distances here are going to be different than on the golf course. I always say I need the relationship to be equal mm -hmm. so that when you change to different scenarios, it's going to be the same relationship. So your Josh Talge stat of the day is what percentage of Titleist staffers play more than one iron model in their bag? It's only like 10% of the, I don't know if it It's 10% of the general public. But 70% of the tour or something? 80. 80. The, the best one of all time was Homa because he was one of the last blade whole way. Yeah. So compared to Tour, he's elite ball striker till he got to a four iron. And so now he plays 100 S4, 105 iron, and then blades. Interesting. This is going to be a comfy yeah. 220, 225 club. Like, just no stress. Again, it's yeah. going to be that hard Ooh. one for you to get over is yeah. being on a par three and going, way less club. Don't swing out of my yeah. shoes. Just this is just stock. So my thing is, is, is the line goal is a very helpful tool to potentially help a player with their direction. However, you as the player are struggling to set up the club the way that you want it. Mm -hmm. So I would lean on you to set it up more standard okay. and then cross that bridge as you adjust. Like yes. Yeah. Um, intuition says you miss left, you should miss, you should bend flat. You actually should probably do the opposite because if I put the toe up, you're more likely to open the face to put the toe down. If I put the toe flat, you're more likely to do this to square it up. Okay. And your clubs are one degree flat. Okay. So these are a little bit up from where we started. So I don't want to like change you dramatically. Yeah. Solid. It's a little thin, but that flies nice. Yeah. The hardest ball position thing is for me is like four iron, because this feels middle of the stance to me. I don't think it is. That didn't feel like it was much carry though. 227. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. All right, and you like that launch, like that height for the forearm? We're going to be real close. Uh, the difference here, and this is where, again, let's monitor yeah. um, alignment, is I moved it a half degree flatter. Half degree flatter. So. Okay. Yeah. Instead of you shifting yep. to, hey, it, it was turned, those first three were yep. good, but they maybe turned a little bit more. Okay. I got you covered. Okay. Missed that one. 230. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at the cover of those three shots. Yeah. So you felt like you thinned one, drew one too much, and hit one good. Same, going within four and yards. And they're pin high on all of them. That is wild. How did driver end up? 30 yards. Seriously? Yeah, seriously. You flashed it when I walked by, and I was like, hey, they're joking. No, really? no, no. Yeah, really, 30 yards. <laughs> I told Neil that Sully picked up 18 yards, and he was like, no, they're not. he's going to be talking all the time. I think one thing I'm a little worried about is I don't, I don't need Sully getting too dialed. I don't need Neil getting too dialed. I don't need Ben getting too dialed. Like, there's, I think, probably some ball speed gains. Uh, that you know, I don't know if we're going to be able to put the genie back in the bottle. If we get if we get Neil really freed up, we get rid of some of his mental demons. I, I don't know if that's if that's great. If we get Ben completely uncorked, I don't know if that's good for anybody's self-esteem. Yeah. See, like that's a good ball for me right there. Yeah. So if it and stays it day, on the it left, almost starts there and then it just stays as, there. Like, it, you know, yeah. through the day it starts to move right more and more. We're gonna start TSR three. Okay. Oh my God, that felt good. That was kind of our target, huh? If it was the tree and we hit the tree, that's a pretty good target. So that's what 2100 spin looks like. What are we looking for? There's two pulleys. There's launch pulley yeah. and spin. Okay. You're low launch and low spin. Yeah. I need one of them to go up. Okay. The other one can stay down. Yeah. We just don't want both up or both down. So 
now when we start freeing you up, now ball speed goes from 69-ish, yeah. 68-ish to 73. There's the quick 17 of carry. Yeah, for sure. So part of it is we move the CG in the back a little bit towards the toe. Okay. So we're slowing down closure rate. Yeah. So those aren't pulling on you. Well, I feel like I can swing this a little freer. And that's thing. Right? Like, I don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to prevent stuff. And that's thing. You, when we put people on mocap, when you get it in the wrong position, yeah. you slow as you go to impact because you're like, that's no good. Yep. And yeah, so, you can sense it. Yeah. Uh, when it's in a different position, we can let you add force. That felt awesome. Hope so. That was 176 speed. Okay. 92 carry. So we've gone from 68 to 92 cover. Uh, that was 45 and a half inches. Okay, got it. Remember, you're a different player than most because you have speed and you can exploit that speed. Your flaw is you think you need to hit the ball this way, but you've you're making the airplane crash now. Your airplane needs a right amount of lift. So if you're driving down the highway and you roll down the windows, you go like this with your hand. You bank it up, it goes to the right. What happens when you pitch it down? It shoots into the car. That seems dumb too. So I'm using the length of the club to force you to hit the ball up in the air. Got it. Now I might, this might be too long, but I'm trying to figure out what's too much. Do it again. No, oh, I cast it on that it's one. Okay. Ooh. I already don't like it, but hit it again. I think you hit a 45 inch shaft better than 45 and a half. Oh, that's that's me. That's ball position getting too far forward. Way better. Way better. Thin, but way better. Okay, give me that back. I'm very intrigued. One eighty point five. Whoa, no. that's gonna be the best one of the day. One seventy eight ball. Okay. Ten and a half launch. Twenty four hundred. Yeah. One oh nine. One oh nine. What a dream that is. And then I'm really excited to get you guys into foot joy shoes. Yeah. As you know, I'm one of the world's foremost connoisseurs of, of you know, foot joy premieres. <laughs> and uh, I'm excited to show you guys why. I've been told that seven out of 10 people are wearing the wrong size golf shoes, which uh, I would we imagine- need, We need to get that sorted. In our group, it's probably even higher. <laughs> How are we looking size-wise for the crew? Everybody was off on their sizing. <laughs> as as we, we predicted 70%, we hit, actually we didn't hit 100%, we hit eight out of nine, or seven out of eight. Seven out of eight. So, so try, most there are There was off. one person who nailed their size. Which is, which is satisfying which is for us. Which is what's, your, what's your conundrum with the pants? Well, Cody and I, you know, we have quad father tendencies. Season two of Strath, I've ripped a lot of pants right here in this region here. Sure. I'm not gonna zoom in. And it's here. And so it's between a 33 and do you wanna be slim? You know, do you wanna kinda of be on the, on the bleeding edge of culture or do you wanna go with something that you actually wanna reach into the drawer and wear, which would be a 34, 32. Mm. So that's where I get stuck. It's like, what am I, am I doing this for me or am I doing this for you? Right. And I think I should be doing it for me. Sure. But then, you know, Saul was like, oh, they could be tighter. I'm like, well, yeah. I'm rooting you on, man. I'm not like critiquing it. I'm like, you got it. If you got it, flaunt it. I don't want to look like that guy, what's his name, Frankie with the fake butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's always getting tackled on camera. But that's what I feel like in the 33s is just, you know, I got like a buddy, the world-class dumpy guy with like <laughs> fake butt cheeks. Nobody wants to see that. I mean, like I literally at, at my club, I play everything to the front of the green. So, because you're you're accepting the rollout. Yes. We want you to we want you to get rid of the rollout, yeah. so that way you can say that's 95 that's yards. I want to hit 95 yes. yards, and bam, you're yes. going to be two feet from the hole. Yes. Your launch angle dictates 
how your ball is going to come in, mm -hmm. and your spin rate is going to dictate whether or not that ball is going to stop. stop. Okay. With that spin rate and that launch, your ball is stopping on the green. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. And not only that, but you're hitting it further too. Yeah. It's no, a great thing. We like it. We like it. The naming. Why is it called Pro V1? Pro V1 came from its origins, right? So you go back to late 90s. We've got the Professional, Professional 90, Professional 100. But we also had a bunch of solid core construction golf balls. We were making, and you remember, like HP2 Tour, HP2 Distance, those products. What golfers had to choose at that time was, all right, am I going to play the distance ball? Or am I gonna play the control tour ball that allows me to spin it, control it, work it, do all the things that a tour player was asking of us? They were just exploring some things and so they said, well, gee, what happens if we put this amazing urethane cover on top of this cool solid core construction? So they did that. And they found out that in fact, that didn't work great because urethane absorbs water and then the core absorbs water and the ball gets really slow after about a week. And so what they did is at the time they kind of layman's terms they put a veneer cover over the core so they made the core then they put this veneer over it and then they put the urethane and the whole point of that casing layer was to insulate the core from any of the moisture that might happen in the normal environment so that it doesn't slow down over time and so because they were taking the professional and then they were merging it with the solid core but they had this veneer the actual name out is the professional veneer and it was the first model but then thanks to the tour team we started getting some feedback like hey you know we'd really like to see some different attributes it was oh cool I want some different flights some different spin and some different feel can you start making me some things and so Pro V1X came along and the X was really just to designate right we knew we weren't going to go to good question um, so how do you then attach some sort of designation to it and so the X came along because it provided different flight attributes and different spin attributes that tour players were asking for. But then you get tour feedback that says, nah, I kind of want it to fly in this window. Or, boy, that spins too much. Can, can you give me that flight, but I want lower spin. Yeah, cool. And that's left dash. We don't ever want to be the group that has all this stuff behind closed doors on the tour truck, because if the tour players want it, chances are there's a golfer out there who would benefit. Very happy with that. Very happy with that.